What is the color you are wearing saying about you? And how is that affecting your personal brand? In this video, coming right up. One sure way to excel in everything you do in your career is by developing a strong personal brand. As you may already know, we all have a personal brand. We're born with it. And a lot of people today have learned to use their personal brands to get ahead in business. So how can you do that too? If you are already aware of your personal brand and you also want it to work for you in ways that it has helped Prince, Gary Vaynerchuk, Steve Jobs, and many other successful names become recognized experts or artists in their fields, then this is for you. There are quite a few elements that make a personal brand strong. And one of them that I'm going to talk about today is a very, very important element in helping you define your personal brand and even expressing your personal brand's attributes. And that is color. That is right, color. Your personal brand must have a color to define, describe, and express the brand's identity, characteristics, and attributes fully. Do you know what your personal brand's color is right now? If you're currently at work or outside as you watch this video, do you know that the color that you are wearing right now is affecting your personal brand? It's affecting your reputation, and it's also affecting what you can do for others in a positive way or a negative way? If you do, good. I hope you're wearing a color that defines your attributes in the best possible way. If not, do not worry, I got you. I'm about to tell you some of the main colors, what their meanings are and how they can affect your personal brand. For color theory's sake, I'm going to begin with primary colors and those are red, blue, and yellow. Red is said to be the color of extremes. It symbolizes power, bravery, and passion. The downside of the color red is that it can also evoke feelings like anger and fear because it is also a symbol for danger. Blue represents honesty, trust, and dependability. So now you know why presidents like to wear blue before elections and red during their victory speeches. They have very good image consultants. Going back to the color blue, it is very conservative and calming. The downside of this color is that it can be boring and sometimes even manipulative. Yellow gives off positive vibes, creativity, and originality. It represents enthusiasm and playfulness. However, too much of yellow can cause anxiety and discomfort. So by mixing the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, we get black. And black is a color of mystery, authority, and confidence. It is sophisticated and an empowering color. The downside of the color black is that it can be a bit too conforming, controlling, and sometimes even sad. Absence of colors, or by simply removing your primary colors, you get white. White stands for purity and elegance. It is simple and open, but it can also be empty and weak. Moving on to our secondary colors, you mix red and blue, you get purple. Purple leaves off a very wealthy and royal impression. It is regal and futuristic. The downside of purple is that it can give off arrogance and impracticality. Blue and yellow gives us green, and green represents growth and reliability. It is nurturing and it is kind. Would you like to guess the negative attributes of green? Envy and greed. Yellow and red make orange, and orange is a fun color. It is adventurous and daring. If used wrong though, it can be overbearing and low cost. Other common colors that I would love to also discuss are gold, silver, gray, and brown. Gold represents optimism and success. It is the color of high value and luxury. However, it can be a little overwhelming too and sometimes pretentious. Silver stands for dignity and wisdom. It is modern and very high tech. However, it can be very cold and impersonal. So you mix your black and white, you get gray, and gray is neutral and reserved. It is wise, it's mature, and very professional. But the negative impression that gray gives off sometimes can be unsure, in the middle, or sometimes even poor. You mix, say, orange and blue, you get brown. 
and brown is very humble and down-to-earth color. It is warm, it is pleasant, it's approachable, and very comfortable, but an improper use of the color brown can lead somebody to look heavy, um, pesante we would say in Italy, and sometimes even dirty. These meanings may vary by culture, history, tradition, sometimes even circumstances, but for the most part in psychology, marketing, branding, business, and even leadership, these colors and their meanings have been used to enhance people's perception of their given brand. So the next time you put something on, think and ask yourself, is this color projecting the image or message I want to convey? Am I wearing the right color for what my brand stands for? And I hope that you are. Most successful people in business are deliberate about what messages they want their personal brand and character to say. So you should definitely do that too if you aim to grow and succeed in business using deliberate messages or making deliberate effort. I'm telling you the psychological power of colors is very, very real. So make it work for you too. So some of the ways in which you can incorporate these colors into your image or into your outfits include, for instance, for men, by applying these colors that represent your brand's characteristics in the top or upper part of your body. So for instance, let's say if you're in a more laid back or flexible working environment, um, or maybe you're an entrepreneur, then you have the flexibility to play with colors. So if the color that best represents your brand is purple, then you can actually even wear a suit if that's what you want. But what you must be careful to do is that it fits you well. The shade that you select is very good for your skin tone, so it looks more tasteful. For those who work in a more conservative environment, so let's say you have a dress code to follow, then basically you can play with that same color in your accessories, your ties, your watches wristband, your uh, pochette or um, uh, pocket square and little details of your suit or even your shirts. And these are some ways in which you can incorporate these colors into your image. For women, same applies. So again, it depends on the flexibility of your job or your day-to-day -day activities. So let's say if you work in a more flexible and creative environment, then you have the freedom to play with colors all you want. Be careful with colors that may have opposite or contrary meanings. For instance, a shirt um, or a dress that has, for instance, red and blue all together at the same time at the top part of your outfit. Now you're sending mixed messages. You're basically saying, I'm strong and I'm chill. However, if you take that same color red and wear it with a color like black, for example, they both complement each other. So in this case, you're saying I'm strong and confident. And so just be careful how you play with colors to make them both work for you. When the colors complement each other, you're sending a more effective message rather than it being confusing. And in a more conservative environment for women, then apply your colors always in your accessories to send your strong messages and statements. Your shoes, your scarf, your nail polish, and many, many other ways that will all make a difference. Other ways to incorporate these colors into your personal brand include your business cards, your website, your social media platforms, because they're all part of your personal brand's experience. I hope this was helpful. Now it's your turn. I'd like to ask you this. Do you know what your personal brand's color is? Do let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to know what color you use to express your personal brand's attributes. Share this with somebody who might find it useful or is in the process of building their personal brand. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next week. Mwah. Ciao.